been doing a lot of work within the classical Bharatanatyam, but innovating within that and, and exploring new themes. And one of those common themes is trying to, to break gender stereotypes that exist already in the classical dance. I think for me as a performer, it has a lot to do with how I think about gender in my life. You know, I was brought up in a sense by rather unconventional parenting uh, in the Indian context where it was made very clear very early on that my sister and I would not be treated differently. We would learn the same things, we would do the same things, we would help around the house in exactly the same way. Um, so it was not like, okay, because she's a girl, she does certain things and because I'm a boy, I do certain other things, right? So that was completely non-existent in, in, in the way we were brought up. Um, and therefore, I think my, my ideas about gender and, uh, and my sensitivity to gender discrimination outside of our household uh, became very, very apparent. I was breaking gender stereotypes by just being who I am, by, by, dance, by being a Bharatanatyam dancer, by um, behaving in, in the way I did, by, by doing the kinds of things I did. So I think that was very much a part of my life. And, and as I started to create new work, as I started to think about ideas for performances, that kind of bled into it. I think my work uh, follows primarily two sort of streams. One is reinterpreting original texts from mythology, original stories uh, that, that we see from the epics and so on. And the other is writing new stories, telling totally new contemporary narratives that don't conform to these stereotypical gender roles and that, that tell more inclusive, more balanced modern day narratives. So when we talk, when we talk about reinterpreting narratives from, from mythology. This isn't something new. Dancers have been doing it for a long time. Even if you look at my mother's or my grandmother's work, there are a lot of productions where they're looking at well-known stories which are generally told from a very patriarchal point of view, like the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. And as soon as one does that, one starts to view the story, view the events that are taking place in that story from the female point of view. And, and therefore, one looks at it differently, one interprets the, 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 the events differently. So I think that is already a powerful tool to, to view these stories that we've heard a thousand times from a new perspective. The other kind of work that, that I'm doing more is using the, the style and the vocabulary of classical dance, but telling modern day narratives. So, so like the example that I gave of, of the love poem, almost always love poems in Bharatanatyam are danced by female dancers about male lovers. And that perhaps uh, feeds into this, this kind of sense that, you know, the, the, the woman's existence is incomplete without her male partner, or that, uh, for our male characters, what is more important is, is conquering and, and, and sort of winning wars. And, and, and in, in, in the new narrative, I'm trying to say, uh, brings the, 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 the focus of the male character into this sensitive man who, who respects the woman's choices, who acknowledges that her life is not centered around his, um, and, and therefore, creates this sort of level playing field between, you know, their romantic equation. Let's take dance completely out of the equation. And if we look at people in general, we now have this understanding that you're born with a certain biological sex and then you kind of grow up with an assigned gender and at some point you figure out whether you sort of associate yourself with and you fit into that assigned gender or not. And these are things that like we didn't even have the vocabulary to talk about 15-20 years ago, especially in India. 
so this totally changes the equation right where gender in itself is such a complex subject and then you bring dance into the picture and then you bring portraying different genders on stage and it's just one whole sort of complicated messy world where where there are no straightforward answers so i think um that perception that that dancing makes you effeminate or gay is kind of a very old conversation that perhaps is not even relevant anymore my sister is somebody who identifies as queer and uh she i think discovered this about herself in her sort of very early teens and 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 came out to the family around sort of the age of 13 14 and and my family being the family that it is was totally accepting and and didn't even flinch to 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 kind of to uh, her declaration um that she may be lesbian and and later on kind of found uh comfort in 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 being identified as queer i am aware of of a certain privilege that i have because i'm i'm i i comfortably identify as straight uh, heterosexual male um and therefore i i try in my own way to acknowledge that privilege and 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 to to create a a, a more balanced playing field for for people who have it harder because they don't naturally fall into these more socially acceptable um sort of gender categories